Hello, and welcome to Fieldwork Fails. This program is a partnership production between the Florida Museum, Guts and Glory GNV, and the Alachua County Library District, sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts, Big Read. Our next speaker is Trista. Trista is a doctoral student at UF's Na School of Natural Resources and Environment. She studies coupled human and environmental interactions related to stormwater management and urban planning using remote sensing and other geospatial data. Prior to coming to UF, she gained experience working in the fields of sustainability and water conservation for local government in the Tampa Bay area. When she's not in her scientist role, she is dancing and teaching Argentine tango. I'm so excited to present the scientist to you tonight. One magical thing about our Fieldwork Fails storytelling series, and I think the reason it's been so popular is because it allows the scientists to be scientists and be that part of who they are, but also to be human beings first. And storytelling really allows people to be their most authentic and brave self, even when it's scary and might feel vulnerable and like you're putting your whole self out there. That's our point. So we always tell our scientists, you don't need a PowerPoint presentation. You don't need data. You don't need research. You don't need a lot of the things that would normally back you up and maybe make you feel legit. You just have to show up and be yourself. Storytelling has a way of doing that for any group, of making us our most human selves. So even when we can't, this is something we say in all of our shows, even when we can't relate to someone's literal experience, we can relate to the humanity, to the emotion in their story, and to some of the details around their experience. So we hope that regardless of whether you came for science or stories or science and stories, that there's something for you tonight. And I think you'll experience a lot of bravery in what our five scientists have to share with you this evening. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. So these days I'm, I'm here in my home office and my work is behind multiple monitors and um, I, I work with remote sensing satellite data by choice, actually. Um, but there was a time in the very early stages of my scientific career that I spent a lot of time outside in the wild. So in my undergraduate program, I had a summer internship in an ecology lab. And the project I was involved with was studying the effects of flooding and ocean warming on organic matter in the soils of mangrove forest. So basically, we were measuring how nutrients move in and out of systems. My lab mates included two seasoned PhDs, which I was not at the time, a postdoc lab manager and the principal investigator, Dr. Lewis. Now, this was my first time in a lab that included any field work. And the week before we were scheduled to go out, I spent working in the lab, preparing equipment and going over procedures, preparing. Um, so we needed to sample the soils of 18 different sites in the Salt Springs State Park, which is a very large intertidal estuary just off of the west coast of Florida, north of Tampa Bay. These sites were very remote and only accessible by boat. This was going to be a really long journey that involved meeting very early in the morning at the university. And remember, I was an undergraduate student back then, so anything before 8 a.m. 8 was really, really early to me. Um, we had to load the equipment, trailer the boat over one hour away to the launch site, and from there we were supposed to drive the boat to our selected site for the day. Now, I had interviewed for this position, I was aware of the details mostly, and I assumed that since I was hired for the job, that the lab manager was also aware of my skills and limitations. Uh, we had discussed my experience on the water, with boats, and in marine systems. I was born and raised in Florida. Uh, I've spent my whole life uh, being in the outdoors. I've been fishing, scuba diving, hiking, all sorts of ecosystems in Florida and across the world. So I was pretty certain that the lab manager assumed I knew my way around mangrove forest. And you know what they say about making assumptions, right? So on my very first field day, we set out really early and I showed up to the lab wearing my most comfortable beach shorts, super comfy short sleeve cotton t-shirt and a cheap pair of water shoes that I actually had to pick up last minute from Walgreens because I forgot to get them the week before when I was prepping for field work. And my lab mates all had on rugged hiking shoes, long pants, long sleeve shirts that you always see fishermen wearing. 
and they looked like they were going to explore the Amazon. I was, I was really confused about why they were wearing these like big heavy gear. Um, but I was also really proud, like, well, I'm the youngest and I'm going to be the most comfortable on this relaxing boat trip. And the day was relaxing and it was beautiful and sunny and breezy as we made that super long journey from the lab to the boat ramp to the study area. And I was so excited as we pulled up uh, to our first site, but I noticed my teammates faces, they, they weren't as excited as I was. And I just thought, oh, maybe it's because they've, you know, they've already been here and done this. Um, but I was super excited. And so we pulled up to the site and I was expecting, you know, like expansive beach and a place to, to walk, but there was no beach. It was just water and mangroves. Uh, I guess perfect for the experiment we were doing, but super daunting for a crew trying to like make their way in. So this environment is so remote that we needed a boat and it feels really empty and desolate at first. But if you stop long enough, if you're quiet, you'll notice that you're surrounded by hundreds of other creatures. They're permanent residents of this place that's very strange to you. Um, small little crabs who keep playing hide and seek from their little holes in the ground. Many of them looking like they've been lifting weights with only one claw. Um, birds singing everywhere, their songs of summer. Now, if you were like me, you would see this beautiful mangrove forest and not the trees, the big picture, uh, the beauty of it and not the beast. And if you're like me, you prepared by wearing your super comfy shorts and your t-shirt and those fun, thin little water shoes that are meant for beach combing only. Uh, but if you are like I was back then, you have no idea how poorly prepared you are for this environment. But your teammates know, they know. So for all, all the beauty of the ecosystem and the gorgeous Gulf, Gulf Coast of Florida, there was really danger everywhere. So there was pretty crabs here and sweet birds chirping there, but um, ow, a branch just slashed my bare leg open. And why are there mosquitoes everywhere? I'm just getting bit by dozens of mosquitoes. And I stepped on an oyster or a rock or a shell. I don't even know, but I'm bleeding. There's definitely blood everywhere. And then the thing that could strike fear into the hearts of even the toughest mangrove warriors, a little slender character, lemon lime in color, with long slinky legs, eight long slinky legs. Um, excuse me, but why are there spiders here everywhere? Um, nobody told me about this. So the rest of the team, they were laughing it off. Um, of course, they didn't like the spiders or the mosquitoes or the shells, but they were seasoned field workers and they had come prepared with sensible things like proper long pants and long sleeve shirts. And, um, you know, those waterproof hiking shoes I was laughing at and hats. I can't believe I didn't bring a hat. So there we were, barely a few feet into the forest. And, um, you know, we had to walk 30 meters into the heart of this to set up our nutrient cycling experiment. And there were just these giant spiders everywhere. And when I say giant, I mean like the size of your hand giant. So I want everybody to do a little exercise. Just hold your hand up in front of you, okay? Um, now look at your thumb. So your thumb is about two inches and that's the same as the average body of a banana spider. And their legs can extend up to five inches, which is about the average size of a hand. So now imagine five inches of spider directly on your face because you were looking at the forest and not the trees and definitely weren't looking at the eight-legged beast. But don't worry, the banana spiders feed on butterflies, bees, flies, moths, and wasps, and thankfully not people. We had the mosquitoes for that. Uh, banana spiders do have a potent venom though, but it's not lethal to us, so no big deal there. They're also called orb weaver spiders because they weave these circular orb shaped webs, which can be as wide as 15 feet. 15 feet of spider web, uh, are you joking? These arachnids are way better prepared than I am. And they're waiting silently for prey to run or walk like me across their path. Now, the experts say that they're not aggressive, whatever. Um, they're so docile that they are even known to share webs, an unusual trait among spiders, apparently. Share webs? Like there could be more than one spider per web? You've got to be joking, right? Nope, wrong. These little spider devils were everywhere, and they were having parties in webs, it seemed like. Definitely no social distancing going on in those webs. Experts also say that these spiders don't usually bite, and those people who get bitten are just 
trying to swat the animal away and the spider's trying to protect themselves. I'm a swatter big time. So I spent that first field day on this really cool research project getting bit by literally dozens of spiders uh, among all the other things that were definitely trying to kill me. But we eventually made it to the center of the mangrove. We set up our experiment, no issues, and it was an otherwise uneventful day. But I returned home that night, 14 hours later, tired, exhausted, and I had dealt with spider bites, mosquito bites, cuts on my arms, my legs, my feet. So I ordered some proper field clothing online, and I wish I had known about REI sooner. So, if you are looking to avoid these creepy crawlers when you go out into the wild, wild nature of Florida, I've got a few suggestions. Steer clear of wooded areas, especially those with dense canopies like mangroves where these spiders live. Uh, avoid going off hiking trails like we did and don't go out first thing in the morning when the creepy crawlers are active like we did. And don't panic if you run into a web like I did. And please, for the love of science, just wear some frickin' pants. Thank you so much.